I think this was caused by the fingerprints I left in the glue. It may have reacted with the spray paint. Or it could just be this, how the spray paint uh, gelled on top of the dust. I'm really not sure. I've never seen it before on anything else I've made with it, including other plastic things, and it's never happened on any of the tests with the plexiglass either. So, um, it's unfortunate that it happened on this. Uh, let me know if it happens to yours if you make this. Hi, this is Utaito Alba here with some build tips on uh, my Zarok paper craft. Zarok is a sword from Aragon, the Inheritance novel series by Christopher Polini. This is the paper craft. I've started resining it a little bit. This is actually normal printer paper and it took to the resin quite well. And uh, this actually broke right as I was setting up. This is my first video tutorial, so forgive me if I'm a little awkward. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to make the ruby out of plexiglass. I have some special spray paint here that's kind of a clear red, so that should be perfect for it. Here's the template page with the ruby on it from my paper craft. A lot of paper crafters use uh, X-Acto knives or craft knives. I use a snap knife, which you can get at a hardware store, but usually not a craft store. It just slides out and it's much more comfortable for me to hold. Don't cut out any of the uh, for plexiglass, don't cut out any of the uh, glue tabs. And also cut along the fold lines too. You want every single one of these faces to be its own separate thing. This is normal printer paper as well. There's no need to make this out of cardstock. By the way, this version of Zarok is from an illustration. I think there are at least three different versions in existence. One from the movie, one from, I guess, one of the books, and then one from a uh, Aragon's Guide to Allegation, and that's the one that this is from which I think is the most canon one. I have not modeled Brisinger yet, but I probably will. Which is the other sword. Right, it doesn't matter what order these are in because they're all the same. And next, we're going to take some just clear tape, our plexiglass. This is just a $3 sheet. You can get this at hardware stores. I made some goggles, lenses with this. But they broke. I want to lay these out so that they're geometrically aligned with each other, just because it's efficient. Make them a little closer, that way you only have to make one cut. Not too close together because there's going to be a little bit of space from the saw blade. There we go. That ought to be perfect. Since I mentioned the saw, I use a coping saw, which is just an eight dollar thing you can get at hardware stores too. Plexiglass comes with a film on it to keep it from being scratched. Now leave that on until everything is cut. You're going to be moving it around, it's going to get scraped. And it really does not affect how it gets sawed. And it's not really necessary that they have tape all the way around their edges. It, just for neatness. Keeps things from peeling up as you're sawing. And since plexiglass doesn't have a grain, it really doesn't matter how you turn them. Even though it does help to line things with the edges, just for more efficiency. Now, uh, I guess in comparison to the saw blade, the spacing is about like that. If you're going to error, it's better to error on like too wide around the edges because you're going to file these anyway so that they're nice and smooth and they fit together because you want it to look like one three-dimensional polygon. Next part is sawing. Now, I'm only promising this is going to work. I'm not promising that it's going to be easy. You push against the blade with your finger, create like a little niche right there to get bite in. There we go. And don't push too hard because that'll make it catch and it'll jump and mess up your straight line. Now to turn, you just kind of leave it stationary, pull back maybe just a little bit. Just keep turning it as you keep going up and down. The most frustrating thing about working with a coping saw is the back here gets caught on the edge of your thing, so it has to be figured out on a case-by-case -case basis how you're going to get around that, depending on the shape of the piece. That actually cracked. It didn't crack under my piece, so I'm safe. You can actually get a little bit more distance by tilting your saw at an angle. There's the corner here. Really good example, you see this saw cut right there in between. This is a perfect spacing. Pretty important if you don't want to work twice by making two cuts in front of these. 
I wonder if I could use wire cutters on this. This little piece here that's really annoying. Do I dare? Caused a crack that actually worked quite nicely, so I shall just file this big chunk down later. Now be really careful when you're doing the tips of these because it's very weak right there. It could crack off. I haven't done it yet, but I could totally see it happening. Yes, I have not cut the table yet. You don't want the papers coming off, so you put a little extra tape on there to hold because you just need it on there until you're done filing. See, as you're working, it really helps to do one at a time so that you have like this big thing here to hold on to. Because the smaller thing you hold on to, the, the more difficult it is to get it cut. So I've got this little piece already cut in there. You can kind of see it moving, I hope. So rather than just cut here, I'm going to cut here first. Simple tip, but good strategy. Feather touch. I am removing ice from a lake with an X. So yeah, I got dark out here. I think since I started, it's been about two and a half hours. My workspace looks like a Hollywood snowstorm. And it smells like a burning dishwasher. Now that they're all cut out, there should be about 17 of them. Next step is to file the edges so that the white stuff here goes right to the edge. Now a neat little trick is actually to just lay your file on a sock. It just holds it better. This will also take a while, but it'll be worth it. I knew I was going to do that. Uh, you're going to want to take the tape off of the edges. The paper's going to want to slide around. You're just going to have to hold it while you work on it. There we go. The uh, film from that covered it so it wouldn't get scratched is actually still on there. I don't think it makes a difference whether you work with it, uh, with it or without it at this point. Sixteen more! Yay! So let's do the crown of the gem here. It's got this big old thing on it. Now that I'm getting close, I have to watch it more carefully because it's a little bit rounded. There we go, that looks good. So I'm going to peel this back so you can see it nice and flat. Now, let's just do the angle. We want the angle to match this. That looks like 100 degrees. Let's see. These are all cut and filed on the edges here at an angle so that they'll fit nicely together when I glue them. The next step is to spray paint them. I am having the inside edge facing down so that the wider area is on top. Because I was going to paint this after I glued it together. Um, I realized that I'd get a much more even coat with the spray paint if I painted it before gluing it together. And I want the glue joints to be free of paint so that they're stronger. I'm using this stuff, red. It's actually clear, not metallic. And just so I don't get paint on my camera, I'm going to use my plexiglass uh, scrap here. Hope you can still kind of see. Oh, and you probably won't want to wear a ventilation mask too when you're doing this. I'm not because I'm a moron. So. If I wasn't in a rush, I probably would have thought of it. Alright. So the paint is fully dry now. Um, kind of stuck together, so maybe space them a little more. Doesn't seem like a problem though. It just comes right off like that. There's no glue on, uh, no paint on the joints, which is good. In order to actually glue these together, I think the best way would be to build another paper one, but only leave this connection unattached so that we can set it in it like a cup. Even though I used paper for this one, for this one I'm using cardstock. You want the glue tabs this time. If you leave a hair on the corner, then they'll stay in order. Since the inside is what matters, I'm going to glue the tab on the outside of it so that it won't disturb the things when they're sitting in there. There we 
go. I was going to use E6000, but everybody's like, no, it'll melt the plastic. So I'm going to try this stuff, number 33, which is specifically made for plexiglass. I've tested it on uh, some of my rejects here. I had three rejects in total. It's only been sitting about half an hour, but that's actually really strong. So good stuff. I'm going to do it in fours. Whoa. Okay, so this glue will dissolve your paint. So be careful about that. See, like a little of the paint came off my finger there, and there's like a white spot on the thingy. It seems to still be a little flexible, which is good because you can't really expect these things to fit perfectly together. Human error. Try not to leave fingerprints on your thing. The one I messed up has a nice fingerprint on it. I can't wipe it off. As soon as I get it to stay, I'm just dropping it in here and then adjusting the angle. This seems to be the best amount. The thing I hate about metal tubes, so once you squeeze them, they don't unsqueeze. If you squeeze too much out, it doesn't suck back in. I'm going to put some more glue on the inside of the corners, too, when this is set. Basically, I want this to be indestructible. Because, you know, you build a sword, you like to nerd out and swing it around, break a few lamps. I've broken lamps. And when you get down to this many left, you have to do three sides at once. Make sure all your edges match up. Which they really don't. Ew, big fingerprint. Not cool. At this point, you probably don't need to put it back in the mold. Eh, well, it's probably a good habit. Now, this is tricky because it doesn't sit quite upright. So I'm going to use this. That was too much. This is probably going to glue to the paper, but whatever. This is the widest one. So we'll go there. My original plan was to do them all at once, but that would have been really hard, especially since it sets so fast. I really had to force that one in there, but I don't feel like filing these anymore. That would be the only way to make it fit better. You can see 
If I had a light to shine behind this, you could see some of the places where the paint is peeling off. So maybe painting it before was not a great idea. It made sense at the time. I'm going to let that sit a while because I had to jam that in there so much. I'll turn the light on so you could see better. And then it'll be the last one. It's probably going to explode. Now uh, this has been sitting for about five minutes. <laughs> see if we can get the last piece in there. It's probably better to make the pieces too small and too large. But it's so precise it's hard to tell. Maybe a better plan would have been to glue the sides of these instead of directly to the octagon. And then to glue the octagon on last. Oh well, I'm probably only going to do this once. I got it in there, but it's really putting pressure on the other joints. So I have to hold it so it doesn't explode. Since it peeled so much of the paint off, I'm going to give it like a dusting afterward. It'll just make it a darker red, but that's okay. Since there are some gaps, I'm going to put glue in there. There are quite a few gaps. I'm just doing the whole inside seams. This is every bit as bad as hot glue, string-wise. I can barely see what I'm doing. I hope you can. I'll let that sit and attempt to go find a better light. All right. Should have thought of that days ago. Yeah, those fingerprints are pretty bad. Are you stuck to the paper? Oh, good. That comes right off. Check this out. Not cool. No, well, I'll have to live with it. If only I had a filler material besides the glue. I'm just gonna try to bridge that with some glue and then let everything set for a few more hours. And since I don't want to glue into the paper, I'm actually gonna pull this out. Let it dry like that. I guess a good way to tell if it's straight is if it rocks on a flat surface. I've got both halves here. Now, unfortunately, it, it kinda don't match up. But uh, it's close enough for my purposes, so I'm going to glue these together now. And I may have to force them a bit. If you want to put something inside too, you better do it before you do this. Now, even now, the joints are still a little bit flexible, so I can force the uh, gaps closed. They're probably weakened, though, if I do that. Now the glue is dry, and it's quite strong, so I'm very happy. I was actually able to uh, hold it so that those gaps sealed up. So um, I'm going to do just like one more coat of paint, so it'll make it a darker red in general. And I'll also cover up some of the areas that um, the paint dissolved on when I was gluing it. I'm going to do the bottom first. I've got saran wrap over my camera now too, so you can see. That's probably plenty, but well, all right, so we'll let that dry and then do the other side. So this side's not totally cured, it is dry but not cured, so I'm just going to do this because it's getting dark out.
and that should be it.